Welcome to Abiding Presence Lutheran Church, a place of grace. All are welcome. Thank you uh, for worshiping with us today, and welcome to those that are visiting Abiding Presence maybe for the first time. Please email us so we can get to know you a little bit better. Each weekend, members receive an email with all kinds of announcements, as well as printable and digital copies of this service. So feel free to follow along as we worship using your own bulletin. You can also find that in the comments below on this YouTube video. Now, as some people are preparing for a return to in-person in -person worship, some uh, may not be able to, and others might not just be ready to. We, however, are committed to continue providing online worship, but we need your help. New equipment and technology to provide these worship services has created a new service opportunity. If you or someone you know has experience or knowledge in video production or digital media, we would like to invite you to join the Abiding Presence live stream video team. Training is provided, so email the church if this is a ministry of service that you wish to adopt. Our new intern and I have been talking about a time for this congregation to gather and reflect on what we hear in worship. You are invited to have Monday coffee with Stefan and Steve. It's going to take place Monday mornings from 9 to 9.45. Not only will we discuss insights and thoughts about the past week's sermon, but also look to where Scripture takes us in the weeks ahead. So grab a cup of coffee and join us Monday morning on the Abiding Presence Zoom room, which happens to be our phone number, 210-494-8884. And now our youth minister, Mike Sayanis, has a special announcement. Greetings. At this time, we would like to take an opportunity to honor our young adults who are transitioning into their new life after high school. In a normal year, these individuals would have been recognized during worship around the time of their high school graduation. So we want to offer a prayer of safe travel and blessed new beginnings. Please pray with me. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the time that our APLC family has been able to spend with these young men and women. Watch over them, keep them safe, and remain constant in their hearts and minds as they start this next step in their lives. Help them to be able to seek and serve you in new ways and in new environments. Let them know that they are loved and that their APLC family is always praying for them. Amen. Let us now turn our attention to God as we prepare our hearts and minds for worship, beginning with the confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Amen. Trusting in the mercy of God, let us confess our sin. Reconciling God, we confess that we do not trust your abundance, and we deny your presence in our lives. We place our hope in ourselves and rely on our own efforts. We fail to believe that you provide enough for all. We abuse your good creation for our own benefit. We fear difference and do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sin in thought, word, and deed. By your grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us. And in your spirit, lead us, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Amen. Beloved of God, and by the radical abundance of divine mercy, we have peace with God through Christ Jesus, through whom we have obtained grace upon grace. Our sins are forgiven. Let us now live in hope, for hope does not disappoint because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, with all your faithful followers of every age, we praise you, the rock of our life. Be our strong foundation and form us into the body of your Son, that we may gladly minister to the, all the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. A reading from Isaiah, chapter 51, beginning at verse 1. Listen to me, you that pursue righteousness, you that seek the Lord. Look to the rock from which you were hewn, and to the quarry from which you were dug. Look to Abraham, your father, and to Sarah, who bore you. For he was but one when I called him, but I blessed him and made him many. For the Lord will comfort Zion. He will comfort all her waste places and will make her wilderness like Eden, her desert like the garden of the Lord. Joy and gladness will be found in her, thanksgiving and the voice of song. Listen to me, my people, and give heed to me, my nation, for a teaching will go out from me, and my justice for a light to the peoples. I will bring near my deliverance swiftly. My salvation has gone out, and my arms will rule the peoples. The coastlands wait for me, and for my arm they hope. Lift up your eyes to the heavens, and look at the earth beneath. For the heavens will vanish like smoke, the earth will wear out like a garment and those who live on it will die like gnats. But my salvation will be forever, and my deliverance will never be ended. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. reading from Romans chapter 12, beginning at verse 1. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds, 
so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of yourself more highly than you ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. For as in one body, we have many members, and not all the members have the same function, so we, who are many, are one body in Christ. And individually, we are members one of another. We have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, prophecy in proportion to faith, ministry in ministering, the teacher in teaching, the exhorter in exhortation, the giver in generosity, the leader in diligence, the compassionate in cheerfulness. Word of God, word of life, thanks be to God. Hello friends, my name is Stefan and it's great to be with you today. Now I heard that some of you started going back to school this week and I was thinking about how one time when I was a kid, I went back to school after having been at home all summer long and I was so used to being at home that I accidentally called my teacher mom. <laughs> now I was kind of embarrassed and I think my classmates laughed at me, but I'm probably not the only person who's ever done that before. I wonder, has that ever happened to you? Maybe for some of you, dad or mom is your teacher right now. Now, um, either way, in today's gospel lesson, we're going to hear Jesus ask his disciples who people think that he is. And we'll find out that some people are a little bit confused about exactly who Jesus is. In fact, some people are even thinking that Jesus is his own cousin, John the Baptist. Um, but thankfully, his friend Peter knows exactly who Jesus is. Jesus is the Son of God. Now, knowing that Jesus is the Son of God helps us be able to love God and love our neighbor in the right way. Um, so as you get settled back into the school year, even if things are a little extra crazy right now, just know that Jesus is always with you and he loves you. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 16th chapter. Glory, Glory to you, Lord. Now, when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, Some say John the Baptist, but others Elijah, and still others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he sternly ordered the disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, o Christ. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O God, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. On this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. Are we built on a rock? Jesus' blessing of Peter in this passage uses a little bit of wordplay that we lose in English translations. The name Peter in Greek, Petros, is itself built on the Greek word Petra, which means rock. Jesus is literally saying, you are Petros, and on this Petra, I will build my church. 
So today I want to ask, do you feel as though you are built on a rock? With an ongoing pandemic, social unrest, and an uncertain economic outlook, for so many people right now, it feels less like the ground underneath is built of solid rock and more as though we are on shifting sands. It can feel hard to know what to expect in the next year, let alone the next month. And for families with kids in school right now, I've heard that even knowing what's going to happen in the next week can be hard to predict. I must admit that I'm feeling some of this myself. As recently as three months ago, I had no idea I would be moving to San Antonio, starting an internship with this church. And yet, here I am, and here we are, and this morning we heard about this church of ours that is built on a rock. I wonder how this declaration from Jesus confidently establishing his church struck the disciples. People don't even seem to agree about who he is. Is he a prophet? People think he might be Elijah or Jeremiah or even his own cousin, John the Baptist. How could a church form amid such disagreement over even a consistent identity of who Jesus is? Thankfully, Peter comes through with the answer Jesus is looking for. Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of the living God, the Christ, the Anointed One. And regardless of whether Jesus was using this image of a rock to refer to Peter specifically, or referring to Peter as representative of all the disciples, or perhaps referring back to Peter's confession of Jesus being the Messiah, the Son of the living God, Jesus tells Peter, on this rock I will build my church. So I want to emphasize that it is the church of Jesus Christ. It's not the church of John the Baptist or Elijah, or Jeremiah, or Peter, or Paul, or Martin Luther, or Ulrich Zwingli, or Pope Francis, or Bishop Eaton. Against this church of Jesus Christ, not even the gates of Hades, which represent here the active power of death itself in the world, can prevail. This we are promised, and it is good news. Now it's one thing to know that the church's one foundation is Jesus Christ, her Lord. My question today, though, is what about when it feels like the foundations in our lives are less of a solid rock and more like all other ground is sinking sand? What word does this text have for us in the middle of great disruption and uncertainty? Which is why I'd like to direct your attention to verse 19, where Jesus says, I will give you the keys to my kingdom in heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. It's really a fascinating statement from Jesus, who in one breath declares that he is establishing his church and gives sweeping authority and responsibility to Peter and the disciples. To really get a sense of what Jesus is telling Peter in this phrase, it helps to understand the words binding and loosing refer to a practice of Jewish rabbis who during this time would render judgments about how the law applies to situations that aren't so clear-cut. When faced with a situation where it was unclear how exactly the Jewish law should apply, rabbis would render a decision that could consider laws binding or could loose a person from the requirements of the law. In fact, throughout the book of Matthew, we see Jesus engaging in this very practice. When Jesus says, you have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. He is effectively saying that the law of loving one's neighbor is binding, even for our enemies. Or later he looses the requirement of not working on the Sabbath when his disciples are picking grain so they could eat declaring in that situation that compassion ought to be prioritized above sacrifice. So, when Jesus declares that this responsibility of binding and loosing, these keys to the kingdom of heaven, are to be given to the church, what I hear for the church today is a promise that there will be complexity. There will be messiness. There will be conflict. We are a church built on a rock, 
the very body of Christ grounded in the saving work of Jesus. But that doesn't mean that in the way we engage in the world, nothing ever changes or everything is always static. And right now, we are living through a time where there is a lot of complexity and messiness. We're figuring out how to be church in a world of social distancing, Zoom meetings, and recorded worship. Outside of church, we are muddling through and figuring out how to do school right now, how to do our work, maybe where to find work to do, and how to keep our families strong in the meantime. There are going to be differing ideas about how best to be church right now, how best to seek God and serve others, and things aren't always going to be so clear-cut. And the good news I hear in this scripture today is, first of all, that we have an example of how to muddle through complexity and messiness in the example set for us by Jesus. Jesus has given the church great agency in the kingdom and much responsibility to bear, but never alone, always looking back to Jesus as our guide. And secondly, that this work we do of muddling through is heavenly work. We worship Jesus, who is named in this passage not only as the Son of God, but as the Son of Man. And likewise, the work we do in this earthly church, our work of feeding the hungry, accompanying the lonely and grieving, sharing the word in sacraments, our quilting, our building ramps, our committee meetings, our video editing, is also the work we do in the heavenly kingdom of God. The earthly and the heavenly overlap. What we do here today as a church matters in the kingdom of heaven. The choices we wrestle with together, the ministries we support, the joys we celebrate, the sorrows we together mourn, these have not just earthly significance, but they matter in the eternal kingdom of heaven. When we gather, whether in person or online, we gather as the very body of Christ in the world. So I declare to you, church, that even in a pandemic, even in the midst of a society full of strife and division, even while sitting at kitchen tables and scattered all over San Antonio and the world, we are an assembly belonging to the Messiah, the Son of the living God, and even death itself cannot prevail over the church that is built on a rock. Amen. Take my moments and my days, let them flow in ceaseless rays. Take my hands and let them move at the impulse of thy love. Take my feet and let them be swift and beautiful for thee. Take my life that I may be consecrated, Lord, to thee. Take my moments and my days, let them flow in ceaseless rays. Take my silver and my gold, not a mite would I withhold. Take my intellect and use every powers thou shalt choose. Take my life that I may be consecrated, Lord, to me. Take my moments and my days, let them flow in ceaseless praise. Take my voice and let me sing, always only for my King. Take my lips and let them be filled with messages from me. Take my life that I may be consecrated, Lord, to me. Take my moments and my days, let them flow in ceaseless ways. Take my will and make it thine, it shall be no longer mine. Take my heart, it is thine own, it shall be thy royal Take my life that I may be consecrated, Lord, to me. Take my moments and my days, let them go in ceaseless ways.
Let us confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Held together in one body by the Spirit of Christ, let us pray for the church and the world. Bless the church that despite the hardships experienced during this pandemic, Christians around the globe will stand firm on the rock who is Christ. Support pastors, deacons, and congressional committees during this difficult time. Give wisdom to churches that are considering when and how to resume their communal worship services. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Bless the earth that it be saved from ecological harm. Restore all land and seas to the beauty and vigor that you intend. Protect animals whose habitat is endangered. Train us to be gardeners of your creation. We pray for those suffering the effects of destructive summer storms and scorching heat. Lord, in your mercy, hear our hear. prayer. Bless the leaders of nations that they govern their people with integrity, attend to their need, the needs of the poor, guard the United States from violence, give clear purpose to protesters and to police, inspire our political parties to conduct the election season with honesty and respect for all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, hear our prayer. prayer. Bless students that whether in class or at home, they can be kept safe and able to learn. Uphold faculty and families and protect all who will be affected by the opening of schools. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Bless all who are in need, all who have tested positive for the virus, the sick, and the dying. We pray for the unemployed, for medical workers, for those seeking a vaccine, for those who are overwhelmed with anxiety about the future. We pray for those we now name aloud or silently in our heart. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Finally, we pray also for ourselves, that with Christ as our rock, we can stand firm. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. In the certain hope that nothing can separate us from your love, we offer these prayers to you through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Let's share a sign of peace with those around us. Text someone, call someone right now. Peace be with you. Steve, peace be with you. Peace be with you. On this rock, I will build my church. Each service opportunity, worship experience, and class offered is firmly planted on this foundation. Abiding presence seeks to follow the example Christ offers us through Scripture, muddling through with the heavenly work of the kingdom of God. Your gifts enable this church, even across a digital divide, to seek God and serve others. Thank you for your continued generosity.
Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. Through your goodness, you have blessed us with these gifts, ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Use us and what we have gathered in feeding the world with your love. Through the one who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. We continue with the thanksgiving for the word. Praise and thanks to you, holy God, for by your word you made all things. You spoke light into the darkness, called forth beauty from chaos, and brought life into being. By your word, you called your people Israel to tell of your wonderful gifts, freedom from captivity, water on the desert journey, a pathway home from exile, wisdom for life. Through Jesus, your word made flesh, you speak to us and call us to witness. Forgiveness through the cross, life to those entombed by death, and the way of your self-giving love. Send your spirit of truth, O God. Rekindle your gifts within us. Renew our faith, increase our hope, and deepen our love for the sake of the world in need. Faithful to your word, draw near to all who call on you through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, for your word of life, O oh God, we give you thanks and praise. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. God, the Creator, Jesus, the Christ, and the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, bless you and keep you in eternal love. Amen. Be at peace. Christ is with you. Thanks be to God. <laughs> 